Christian has something more than just happiness, joy. Joy is uniquely a Christian word. And uh, yeah, that's my prayer that as we meet it in God's presence, as we worship Him, uh, one of the things that happens to our heart and our soul is that the Spirit of God lifts us. And the Word says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Into God's Word, let's go on the Word of Prayer. Father God, we worship you this morning once again. We thank you, we praise you, and we worship you. You alone are worthy of all our worship. You alone are worthy of all our praise. The Lord, you reign and rule, and you are seated high in your throne in heaven. All things on earth, under the earth, and in the heavens, bow down to worship. The word says that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you for this precious name of Jesus that you have given us. Your name is a strong tower. Your name is our refuge. Your name is our hope in times of hopelessness. Your name is our comfort in times of tears and sadness. Your name is our salvation in a world that's lost. We thank you, we praise you, we worship you. Lord, as we meditate on your word this morning, I pray that you will speak to us. We ask you, Holy Spirit of God, that you will open the eyes of our understanding. The words of my mouth, the meditations of our heart and be accepted what you said. You will see Christ as you are truth. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So turn with me to uh, Mark chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 34. And calling to the crowd, um, he was with his disciples. So calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? And what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. If I ask you what was the most precious thing you have, yeah, so you will say your life, but if you, if women have some very costly jewelry, uh, they will say that is the most precious thing because otherwise I can ask you for that. Or if for the men, it's usually some gadget that they have. So if somebody had a very uh, expensive phone or something, and then probably that is the most precious thing. Or it might be the bikes or the cars or vans or houses or whatever else. And even though, because we, we love the Lord, we come to the church every Sunday and we know God's word, every once in a while, God wants us to remember what's the most precious thing we have. Sometimes when we travel in the highway and, and we are traveling at very high speeds, these days, very good highways. Last night I was driving from uh, Gundur back to Hyderabad. And I was, when I was praying and preparing for this morning, I was, I was thinking about how God protects us on the roads when we travel. We're driving at hundreds, 100 kilometers per hour or more. And every now and then in my travel, I notice some very serious accidents that have happened just now or sometimes a few minutes back. Oh, we feel very powerful when we drive some big cars or we drive very fast. We feel we have control of a lot of things. And sadly for some, it just ends in a matter of a few seconds. Recently, I don't know how many of you are following um, this book that Harry uh, wrote. Harry is the second son of uh, King Charles in the UK. He wrote he has written a book and it was launched. It was and uh, of course, it's very sad um, to see what is happening in the lives of royalty. Right? They're, they're, they're supposed to, they were supposed to be uh, the kings and queens that ruled almost most of the planet at one point in time. His mother 
Diana, Princess Diana at that time. In, in order to avoid the paper, the media people who were chasing her, they traveled so fast in a car and they met with an accident and instantly her life was snuffed out. And the sadness of it all was that when she died, she was found with another man in that car. And we can tell story after story after story, which is happening around us, where after all we know and after all we have and we think, even though we know that life is precious, our actions demonstrate that we do not know that our life is precious. So I want to briefly talk about what the Bible tells from this passage that we just read from Mark chapter 8. Our human soul is of infinite worth and we find that our, our God designed our soul or he, when he made us in his image, he did not create us so that we would die after 100 years or 200 years or 1000 years. Many times when we, even as believers, when we hear the word soul, we think that we have a soul. So we think we have a soul. We think we are this body. No, we think we are this body. And we have the soul inside of this body. That's what we think. That's what we think. But what we have to understand from God's word is that we are the soul which has a body. God made Adam a living soul. He made Adam out of the earth, the Bible says. But he was just clay. He was just lying down. He was just like a doll on the ground. But when God breathed into that man that he made, Adam became a living soul. He did not become a living body. He became a living soul. So that's the first thing that I want to leave with you. That we are not a body. We are a soul that has a body. And the Apostle Paul writes how this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because he wants to come and reside with us. The Bible says how a man, if he is not careful with his body, evil spirits will come and dwell in that body. Along with this soul that is already living in his body. And therefore the Bible calls us, calls this body our earthly house. And so our focus has always been to pamper this body and starve the soul. In reality, if you had something very precious in your house, you would probably keep it in a locker or in your almira or some someplace very safe. Leave what is most precious to you in the balcony of your house or on your doorstep and carelessly forget about. But when it comes to our soul, we find that we take care of what is temporal and we forget about what God made for eternity. I mentioned three things that we read in these two, three verses. The first one is our soul is a treasure. It's a valuable treasure in the eyes of God. What makes this, what makes this so valuable? The first one is the value of our soul comes from God. I'll give you an example. Uh, if you bought a cricket bat, you can order online a good cricket bat. Maybe that bat is 500,000, whatever, 5,000 rupees. But imagine Dhoni has signed or Kohli has signed on that bat. It will probably cost you a house. People auction it, they don't sell it. Yeah, they auction it, right? They don't sell it because it's so expensive. Now, take it one step more. This is not just someone who has signed on a bat. God not only just signed on us, not only left his fingerprints on us, he actually made us. Not just signing, yeah, you get what I'm saying? It's not just his signature. His fingerprints are on us because he made us. God did not make man on the first day. He was the last of his creation. He created everything and prepared it. It looks as if he prepared everything in order to come to his final and most wonderful creation of all that he will make someone in his own image. Each one of you, each one of us in this world is a masterpiece of God. That's why your soul is infinitely valuable. Not only is it valuable because of who made you, your value also comes from the fact that you are the only person ever who has lived. Now I have heard my uh, wife, my sister and, and some of our women folks speak about when they want to go buy their dresses. They don't want to go to all the shops. They, they, don't want, they don't want to go to all the shops. They want to go to a shop where they will have only one or two pieces of their dress. Now if that is what we think when we think about our clothes, you are so unique that even our fingerprints are different from our own children. Or you don't have the fingerprints of your parents. You are unique and you are rare. And that is why you are infinitely valuable. You are infinitely valuable because of who made you. You are infinitely valuable because of your uniqueness, your rarity. The third reason I want to say is what your potential is. Only human beings have the potential for transformation. 
dogs and cats have lived with human beings for a few hundred thousand years. They have not started the school or the university. They don't gather together for birthdays or weddings or a funeral. They don't celebrate birthdays and wonder oh, how time is flying fast. Look at this fellow I saw him like a baby yesterday. The person you are today in 2023 on January 15th was not the person you were on January 15th, 2022. The person you will be, God willing, in January 15th, 2024 will not be the person you are today. We wish each other a happy new year. But if we repeat the same things of the past and we cannot expect a different outcome, we have infinitely valuable because of our potential that God is in the process of making us like Jesus. I was born a boy, grew up, got married, I'm a father, I become a grandfather, and then die one day. Now that is true for everyone. But if you are a child of God, all of this is true in this world. The greatest potential you and I have is the potential for transforming and becoming like Jesus. Of course, Jesus is not going to force us to become like him. In the Garden of Eden, he looked at Adam and Eve and said, be fruitful and multiply. That didn't mean that Adam and Eve will have babies every year. So something that Adam and Eve had to do for themselves, and same thing with our transformation into becoming like Jesus. He has called us in this journey to become like Jesus. That doesn't mean automatically we will start becoming like Jesus. You and I have to do in participation with, in partnership with the Holy Spirit God and in obedience to it. We are infinitely valued because of who made us, because of our, our rarity and because of our potential. The fourth one is that we are infinitely valuable because of how long this soul is going to live. Now for a phone, um, that is going to be with you for three years. People say statistically that people keep changing every two to three. And we end up paying anywhere between, I don't know, 12 to 15,000 to more than a lakh these days for uh, yeah, some very crazy phones. Even that phone has an expiry date. God made this soul of ours to live forever. Can you imagine what the price of such a thing will be? Something that will never be destroyed. It cannot disintegrate. It cannot disintegrate. Uh, disintegrate is coming apart. Right? It, it will not come apart. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, we read like this that on that last day, some will be raised to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. Our soul was created to be forever. It's going to live forever with God in heaven, it is going to live forever in hell. All Things that we see outside, the sun, moon, stars, all creation, even this body, all of it will go away. And therefore, your soul is infinitely valuable. You are infinitely valuable because of who made you. You are infinitely valuable because of how rare you are. Infinitely valuable because of the potential you have for transformation. Infinitely valuable because you are meant to live forever. And the last, the fifth thing that I want to talk about why you are infinitely valuable is highly in demand. And that means people are wanting a lot of something and its supply is low. Gold is a good example. A lot of people desire it. Diamonds are also stone. So it was, uh, it was carbon under pressure that became the stone. So you are infinitely valuable because of who desires you. We are made with the potential to love and to be loved. Something to have everything to celebrate in terms of the things we have. It's another thing to have people with whom we can celebrate with what we have. And the greatest of all loves, the greatest of all things that can desire us, that can desire who we really are, is God Himself. When God desires something, that becomes infinitely valuable. Imagine that God will be one of our Let's say KCR or Narendra Modi will pick one of you to meet him today. Comes running here and says the Chief Minister or Prime Minister wants to meet you, lunch with you today. You will be on all the newspapers, news channels <laughs> by 2 o'clock today. Joe Biden called you, then you will be world popular. Now, if God desired you to the point where he will shed his blood and die for you, how much more are you valuable? He says, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If you open, if you hear my voice and open that door, I will come in and have lunch or dinner with you. We are infinitely valuable because we belong to Him twofold. We belong to Him because He made us. We belong to Him because He died for us and bought us again after we were lost. Some other writes like this. We want to know how valuable you are. Place your ears on the chest of Jesus and hear His heart. So you are, our soul is not only an infinitely valuable treasure, it is also something with which you can trade or transact. We read the 36th verse, it says, What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? 
And what can a man give in exchange for his soul? The Bible says that your soul is something that you can trade with. And in that trade, what can a man give in return for his soul? Men and women across the globe are selling their soul minute by minute to acquire something of the world to them. Whether we like it or not, every second that passes in our life, we are trading our soul. We send our children to school so that they will trade their soul for education. 15 years of their lives are sold to acquire that education. The 12 to 15 years of our lives or 20 years of our lives are sold. Our soul is sold for, for employment, for salary, for food, for sustenance, for jobs to have, for, for properties to acquire. We sell our soul. Seconds are not going to come back. Acquire is depreciating and what we spend to acquire is not coming back. Trade our soul moment by moment all through our lives. Paul says, the Apostle Paul says, He was trading his soul to gain the excellencies of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. In another place he says, Oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection, being made conformable to his death, even death on the cross. I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. I want to see him face to face. I trade my soul to become more like him. It is a very bad bargain if we were to trade our soul to gain what is in this world. What can a man give in return for a soul? Or what can a man gain? Uh, what is it profit for a man to gain the whole world? And the tragedy is even if you were to trade your soul, nobody is going to get the whole world. It's like going to a hotel and ordering for uh, If you have the money to order a jumbo pack, but your stomach can only accommodate one plate. That's why when Alexander died, the Alexander the Great died, leave my arms out and carry my coffin to let the people know that I came in empty and I'm going out. That part is because even that which you gained, you cannot, that which you traded your soul for and gain, like your house, your property, your, uh, your jewelry, your money, or whatever, you cannot keep. The first reason why it's a tragic loss is that this loss, you can never reverse it. If you were to die and meet God, and there on that soul is stamped lost. That lost soul is never going to be found again. Oh, with God, there is plenty of mercy. Infinite mercy at the cross. Available only when you are alive now. Mercy of the cross of Jesus stops the moment we die. That's why the Bible says, Now abides faith, hope and love. But the greatest of these things are love. And if you read 1 Corinthians 13, he says how. Some of these things will not be needed in eternity when we are in the presence of God. You stand face to face with God and you're worshipping Him in the heavens. You don't need faith because you've seen When you are in heaven and all your sorrows are gone and your tears are wiped away, you don't need hope because nothing in the future is uncertain if you're now in the presence of God. It is not only a loss you cannot reverse, but it is also a loss you cannot excuse yourself from. Excusable loss. Everyone who reaches hell, when you hear messages from the churches, or we get the impression that, oh, God is going to throw that person into hellfire. We even curse at each other, telling them to go to hell. Nobody is going to hell because someone else sent them there. Everyone in hell went there because they chose to go there. God did not make your soul to go to hell, He made your soul to be with Him. And therefore, it is an inexcusable loss. And therefore, we should be warned not to trade our souls, or bargain our souls with the world. I want to read with you five verses and I will pray. I found in Romans. So one is found in 323. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Without the saving grace of Jesus, is right now trading their soul to become like Jesus. Without salvation, nobody is trading their soul to become like Jesus. The saddest thing for a person would be to come to the church and deceive themselves to think that they are saved when they are not in the journey to become more like Jesus. Um, if you come to church and you are not becoming more like Jesus, then you are deceiving yourself that you are saved. Yeah. So Paul says, test, test your salvation and he who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. He calls you to confess with your mouth your past so that it might be forgiven your future so that you might become more than him. Acts chapter 16 verse 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household will be saved. Some of you here, you are the only person in your family that has come to Jesus. The beauty of God's promise is when you trade your soul to get Jesus, 
He not only saves you, he makes you a channel of that life to your family also. You have a burden to form of your relatives, your family members who still don't know Jesus. Mark chapter 8, after Jesus talks about this great exchange of human soul, he talks, he finishes that chapter like this. Verse he says, Whoever is ashamed of me and my words in his adult present sinful generation, of him to the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father. Not only calling you to examine the condition of your soul this morning. He's also asking about whether you and I are ashamed of his name as we witness to the souls around us, starting from our families. It's infinitely valuable thing that you are trading with every day. Trading. If you will lose your soul. If you lose it, it's a tragedy. Let's see. Father, what we thank you for your people, for creating us in your likeness and in your image. Lord, we learn from your word that our soul is infinitely precious and valuable because you made us. You made us unique. You made us with the potential to become like Jesus. You made us forever. And above all, you desire us because you have given your very life for us. We also learned, Lord, that this soul that we have given is what we trade in life, now and time, that we might earn Jesus, that we might become like Jesus for eternity. Let none of us here this morning lose our soul. We learn that no one is in hell because someone sent him there. Every single one who sadly lands in hell is because they chose to go there. Your grace is enough. Your, your grace is inviting us this morning. For God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should accept Him should not perish but have been the last in life. Lord, I pray for every single dear one who has gathered here this morning that You will enable us to examine the condition of our salvation. That we might examine with fear and trembling how our journey is to becoming more like Jesus. Are we trading our soul for the pleasures and possessions and philosophies of this world? Or are we trading our soul for the infinite greatness and riches in Christ Jesus? You have called us to live the salt and light of this world. I pray for each family represented here this morning. You know their needs. You know their pain, their sorrow, their disappointments. But the word says that your grace is sufficient. We thank you that you are a prayer hearing God and prayer answering God. We ask all these things in Jesus' matchless holy name. Amen.